Okay, here we go. We're going to try and remove the motor from the ESC. Now I'll just use a tiny little vise here and it's got uh, masking tape wrapped around the jaws so it doesn't give any metal to metal contact running across there. It gives it a slightly softer grip on things. Now this is lead free solder and this is the absolute shits of stuff to get off. Um, that tip looks a bit black because I've got this little iron, I think this is a hundred watt and it's maxed out trying to get to melt these things so let's get in here and see what we can do so doesn't matter if we melt a couple of these together right? there's, now there we go we got something's turning liquid there you can see we hardly made a dent in it what we'll do is we'll use one of these solder pumps and we'll get in there and try and remove as much of this lead free garbage as we can it helps if I charge the pump we're ready there we go we can see we're getting down to the nitty gritty bit and then there we go there out she comes now we'll go to the next one just do that again I don't want to bore anybody but I mean this is it really is you, know, you can't be chicken with the thing, you know, you just got to, got to, um, there we go, and get in here, get some more heat on that, and there we go, out she came. One more, Whew. bit of smoke, and same thing, we get in there, we've sort of got to wet that as best we can and then see if we can't remove as much of that lead free rubbish as we can we're nearly there now we put some leaded solder in there so we get a good heat transfer and pump. Bob's your uncle, there's the motor off. Now what we'll do to just to clean these up so these if we do find a way to test and we can use them again is there. You'll never have this problem again once you use leaded solder, it's just getting that first lot out and there we go we have ourselves one motor disconnected from the ESC that's quite hot I'll give this a wash with alcohol and get the flux and stuff off it but as you can see it hasn't you know hasn't leached solder through or anything so this will be quite easy to put the motors back on if we can find a way to test these so the idea of this video is we're going to uh, show you how to test these motors to make sure the motors are okay and of course if the motors are okay then we know that we can either just get some new ESCs or step uh, the next step as I said is to find a way to test these little mongrels so let's see how we go okay to test these motors out we're going to need one of these things these are about 30 bucks off eBay so that's why you've got to take the bell off the motor so we'll just do that again this is motor number four see that clip comes off nice and easy gets sucked into the motor and we get rid of that little tiny ring down here we're going to get rid of it we're going to take it off carefully because I guarantee you, you won't buy that in a million years there it is we'll put that aside now same deal carefully just maybe take the cables and we just Pull the motor apart. There we go. Again, same deal. Inspection inside. Make sure there's no magnets come loose. They're all looking pretty good and well and stuck in there. Again, there's some rust and stuff in there that we'll need to get rid of. But uh, we'll give that a bit of a clean up later on just with some oil. It doesn't take much. 
I'm suspecting that these little bits of blue goop that you can see down in there are probably to balance the motor as well. There's no other reason for them to be there. There we go again. So this is 135. <coughs> and we have to do three phases, remember. So that's one phase, that's two phases. Whoops, get that off there. 134. Jeez, that's really close. And then we take the red one and we go back to the black and 134. So once again, motors absolutely spot on. These are the Inspire, uh, Inspire 1 V2. So this is the 420 kVA. Um, I'll just put this back together to keep everything together, but I'll pull it apart later on and we'll go through and oil all this up and clean up the... I mean, a little bit of rust on there is not going to do any damage anyway, so long as it doesn't get in between the the laminates. So very carefully without pinching fingers again. There we go. That's what I mean. Now we just take our little little brass ring again. Let's pop that in the groove. Let's have a look and make sure that we're not going to bust anything. That looks pretty good. And whoop. Murphy's Law says if this pops off you'll never find it again, so just be careful. And there it is. And it's properly in. We should be able to rotate that a little bit. See how we can just rotate the clip? Yep, that's in the groove properly. Motor spins beautifully and freely. So now, at least what I know, is I have four absolutely perfect 420 kVA Inspire 1 V2 motors, tested and ready. So I'm patting myself at the back, a smart ass comment, someone's got to congratulate me because no one else will. But this is, as I said before, this is where it all turns to custard. And I got the hiccups, which is bullshit, but anyway, I just can't work out. Maybe I'm just going to have to fry one of these things, you know. Maybe this is, maybe this is positive, negative, and one of these is the PWM signal. And we can get in there and and see what we can fire up. Okay folks, we'll do part three as soon as I find a way to make this ESC test work. This is why you don't test these coils or the the impedance and it doesn't matter you can't hook this up wrong, right? You remember last time we were like 137? I see we're getting 91 and then we go over here and we'll hook that up and we're getting 59, and then we can hook the black up to the yellow. And there we go, 94. Now that is so far out, you say, oh, those motors are trash, you've got to throw them away. But that's not true, because the, the magnets uh, have a big influence on the, on the uh, impedance.